The Czech Republic, which used to be known as Bohemia, is a country in Central Europe. In this Czech folktale, a prince goes on a journey to free a princess. As you read, Take notes on the three men's special skills. Many years ago, a Bohemian king and queen, who were known for their kindness and love of justice, ruled over a peaceful kingdom. In time they had a son, whom they raised to be a noble and brave prince. When the prince was a young man, his mother died, leaving him alone with his aging father. One night, the king... And turned to his son and said, My prince, I am old, and it is important to me that you have a family of your own before I die. Go and unlock the tallest tower with this key. At the top of the tower stairs, you will find a room that is filled with enchanted portraits. Choose one of the princesses that you see in the portraits to be your bride. The curious prince obeyed his father and found everything to be just as the king had said. He was amazed to see that the princesses in the paintings moved and gestured to him as if they were alive. The prince walked from portrait to portrait, and as he did, he realized that each princess was more beautiful than the one before her. As he stared at the lovely maidens, he thought, since all I can judge is their beauty, I will pick the last princess, who is surely the loveliest of all. He walked toward the final painting, which was covered with a dusty cloth, and resolutely pulled the cloth from the portrait. The painting showed an achingly sad and hauntingly beautiful princess, and the prince whispered to himself, She is the one. Then he turned quickly and went to tell his father which bride he had chosen. When the king heard that the prince had chosen the sad princess, he cried, O oh my son, why did you look at what was hidden? The princess you have chosen is the prisoner of a terrible wizard who turns men into stone statues. and has defeated each of the princes who have tried to free her. I beg you, choose another princess, or I fear that I will never see you again. When the king The Prince A chooses the picture of a princess who has been captured by an evil wizard, B. decides to invite the most beautiful girls from the pictures to his castle, C. tells his father that he will choose another bride instead, D. discovers that the last princess is not beautiful at all.
Yet, the king's words only made the prince more determined to rescue the princess, and the next morning he confidently mounted his horse and set off to save her. However, the prince quickly became lost in a dark, tangled forest and began to doubt his chivalrous plan. After wandering through the dense forest for hours, he gave up all hope of reaching the edge of the woods and decided to stop for a rest. Just then, he heard a cheerful voice calling from behind him. Stop and let me be your servant. One person can't do much alone, but I can help you if you let me. Turning, the prince saw a very tall man running toward him. When he asked the man who he was, the stranger replied, I am called tall and I can stretch myself even taller. Watch me. Then, tall grew until he could lift the nest out of a nearby tree. That is a useful skill, said the prince, but it won't help me get out of this forest. Wait a minute, sir, said tall, and he began to grow even taller. Soon his head was above the treetops. He called down to the prince. Now, I can see the way out of the woods. If you let me go with you, I will lead you out of the forest. The prince agreed, and the two men soon arrived in the middle of a large field. As the prince squinted in the sunlight, Tall cried, Sir, my friend Wyatt is sitting over on that rock. You should let him help you, too. After all, the two of us can only do a little bit together, but three men can achieve much more. What is his talent? Asked the prince. Overhearing their conversation, Wyatt decided to demonstrate his skills and bellowed, Look out. Then he began to swallow huge, gulping mouthfuls of air. With each swallow, he grew wider until his body filled the meadow. In fact, wide grew so immense that Tall and the prince had to run back into the forest to avoid being knocked over by his great belly. Then, wide smiled and blew out an enormous breath. In an instant, he was thin again. With that skill, I certainly want you to help me, said the prince. Who does the prince meet? A. One man who is helpful and one man who is unhelpful. B. Two men with special skills that can help him. C. One man who is tall and one man who is skinny. D. Two men who are trying to trick him. The three men walked on until they met a man who was standing beside the road with a handkerchief wrapped around his eyes. Turning immediately to the prince, the blindfolded man asked, Will you allow me to serve you, too? Startled, the prince answered, I would appreciate your help. But why do you cover your eyes so that you cannot see? The man laughed. When I wrap this handkerchief around my eyes, I can see as well as you can, but when I remove it, my vision is so sharp that it pierces through everything. Indeed, if I look at anything for too long, it ignites and turns into a pile of ashes. That is why I am called piercing eyes. In that case, said the prince, I would like your help. Besides, four men must be more capable than three. You can't see the wicked wizard's castle from here, can you? Removing his blindfold, piercing eyes glanced around and easily spotted the castle, although it was a great distance away, beyond the highest mountains and hidden in a dark forest. Without our help, Prince, you could travel for a year without reaching the castle. But with us, you will arrive tonight. 
Then he used his gaze to burn a path through every obstacle directly to the wizard's castle. Following this path, the four travelers reached its iron gates just as the sun was setting. Entering the castle, they soon found themselves in a great hall where a long table was loaded with the finest of foods. Along the wall, many knights and princes stood like statues where they had been turned to stone by the wizard, some in the midst of drawing their swords, others frozen in attitudes of terror, and one lifting a tankard of ale. Hungry after their long journey, the four travelers sat down to enjoy the feast before them and ate until they felt like their stomachs would pop. Just as they took their last bites, a crooked old wizard in a long, black cape appeared in the doorway. Around his waist hung three iron belts. Looking darkly at the prince, the wizard croaked, I assume that you have come to take the princess from me, so I will make a deal with you. If you can keep her for three nights, she will indeed be yours. But if I find her missing when I return each morning, I will add you and your friends to my collection of stone statues. Then he vanished in a puff of green smoke. As the cloud dissipated, the men saw the princess, as pale and cold and still as the grave, standing in the place where the wizard had been. The wizard, A, turns the four men to stone, B, refuses to show the men the princess, C, tells the men they must answer a riddle, D, bets that the men will not be able to keep the princess. The prince bowed respectfully. My lady, we offer you our service and pledge to rescue you from this castle. Though the princess could make no reply, her sad, silent stare pierced the prince's heart and fueled his desire to save her. The four companions agreed to stay awake all night, guarding the princess. Tall said, I will stretch myself out and wrap myself around the room like a fence so that no one can steal her from us. White announced, and I will swell myself in the doorway like a cork so that no one can get in or out. Piercing eyes declared, nothing can happen in this hall without my seeing it. Yet, despite their best intentions, the men were soon lulled to sleep by the wizard's magic. Shortly before sun sunrise, they woke and saw that the princess was gone. All were alarmed. But piercing eyes looked quickly around and saw an acorn hanging from the top branch of a tree. That wasn't there yesterday. It must be the princess, he cried. Tall stretched himself out the window and grabbed the acorn. He dropped it into the prince's hand just as the wizard was entering the hall, and the acorn turned back into the princess. When the wizard saw her, one of the iron belts around his waist cracked and fell off. Furious, he stumped out of the room. The second night was just like the first, the four men fell asleep, and when they woke, the princess had disappeared. This time, piercing eyes saw that a sparkling garnet was buried under a tall mountain that stood next to the castle. He quickly burned a tunnel through the mountain, and Tal reached through it and grabbed the gemstone. 
Once again, as the prince took the garnet from Tall, it turned back into the princess. When the wizard opened the door, another belt broke and clattered to the floor. In a rage, he glared at the men and spat, We will see who wins this game. The wizard, A, hides the princess, but the men use their skills to find her. B. Hides the princess and the men cannot find her. C. Keeps the princess from leaving the castle. D. Tricks the men into giving up the princess. The third night was the same as the others, but this time when piercing eyes woke, the princess was so well hidden that he was afraid that he would never find her. Finally, he exclaimed, there she is. She is at the bottom of a deep sea disguised as a golden ring. Not wanting to waste any time, Tall grabbed piercing eyes and widened his arms and sprinted toward the sea on his long legs. When he reached the edge of the water, however, he realized that it was too deep for him to reach the ring. Without waiting to think, Wide bent down and, in one giant gulp, swallowed the sea. Then Tall grabbed the ring and rushed back to the castle. The sun was rising when Tall reached its gates and, in desperation, he hurled the ring through the window of the great hall. It landed next to the prince. And when he bent to pick it up, the ring turned back into the princess. At that moment, the wizard entered the room. When he saw the princess, his final belt cracked and clattered to the floor. In an instant, the wizard turned into a menacing raven, leapt from the window, and flew away. As soon as he had gone, the princess turned to the prince and declared, You have saved me from the wizard's cruel spell. Thank you. The prince smiled and said, You are welcome, but I could never have done it without my companions. You see, a man can only do small things alone, but he can do great things with friends. By evening, the prince, the princess, and tall, wide, and piercing eyes had left the wizard's castle and re- Turned to the prince's kingdom. In time, the prince and princess grew to admire one another's strength, gentleness, and goodness. They fell in love and were married. However, while the kingdom celebrated with the newlyweds, tall, wide and piercing eyes grew restless. Not long after the royal wedding, the three friends set out on a journey to find someone else who needed their help. It is said that they are still wandering today, helping anyone who needs their assistance. What happens to the men? A. The prince marries the princess, and the three men go looking for others who need help. B. The prince falls in love with the princess, but he still travels with his three friends. C. The prince saves the princess, and the three other men move into the castle. D. The prince finds the princess, but he does not thank the other three men.